Oh my, what horrid weather this night. Am I glad to be in the dry again? I'll hang my coat here. Hope you don't mind. Hmm, a lot of cozy wear. So you are the indoorsy type then? Just how I like them. You can actually taste the sun in someone's blood if you can believe that. It tastes like limey water perhaps? Or a cloudy drink. <laughs> oh, don't bother getting up. You must have felt it yourself already. One look into my deep, dark eyes and you were done for. My hypnotic grip engulfing you. Hmm, more gleeful terror in your eyes. <laughs> No worries, I'm not here to harm you. Much. Just a little bite. Where's the harm in that? <laughs> but why hurry? Why not work a little more on you? On your delicious body? Make the bloody meal a splendid one. Can you feel that too? The soft compulsion of my captivating voice. Like a soft, warm light. Or perhaps a dark, hot liquid within your mind and muscles. Now it starts within your toe, softening the tendons, slowly dissolving the heavy weight of your daily life. It lazily starts to wander ever so tenderly inside your souls, unwinding the muscle tugging on your toes, tepidly relaxing the force exerted over the ankle after warmly wandering over the heel. That dulling influence radiating into the entire foot, up to the tips of all your toes. The weight of your own body has exerted its pressure for too long during the busy day. Let my voice relieve you of that tension. Hmm, <laughs> you are doing splendidly. Then it wanders further, slowly, warmly, rising to the Achilles tendon, caressing your tired calves as it creeps upwards through your lower foot, massaging every fiber it comes in contact with, leaving it relaxed, softly releasing the strained tension on the bone oh so placidly, until it reaches the complex interplay that is the knee, when the joint is heavily worked, from walking, from bending. The slow caress of my hypnotic voice settles in for a little bit. A hot, strong sensation, mending the workings of the day there. The mechanical pressure fading as if it was never there to begin with. Even the kneecap seems to flow within the muscles holding it. Just let that peaceful influence sit and radiate into the tissue. Let go of the tension in it. Good. Now it raises further into your body, up into your thigh, describing a spirally motion within the strong, hard-working muscles, comparable to a gentle massage done by firm, ethereal hands, almost like a tender water on the bone within leaving all around it without strain. My voice is slowly, slowly rising further, up into your hip, where it works its relaxing magic, softening sinews as it has done before, softening the robust cheeks as you lay there, surrendering to the influence of the warm and gentle pull of my compulsion. Hmm. Even the tailbone can feel its relaxing influence. After all the remaining tension is released, 
the sensation wanders to the base of the spine, where hip and it do meet, softly gripping the entire tired side of your back. Not just the bone, but the muscle too, for it has worked oh so very hard against Earth's gravity and deserves some relief, wouldn't you agree? The lazy influence of my words continues rising to your lower back, caressing those muscles lined along it. Do you feel it, almost warming you throughout, as it creeps, swivels, as the warmth seems to almost reach your sides from the spine it wanders upwards from, as it starts to reach the diaphragm, heating it throughout, softening the breath into a monotonous, lazy stream of air, in and out, in and out. Good, do you feel the little ember left behind as the sensation in my voice wanders higher? almost streaming to your ribcage, soft, hot, almost feeling it entirely, not unlike a beaming light, yet gently pulsing with your heartbeat, with the aorta in your stomach. As the muscles along your ribs have relaxed, the heat wanders on up between your shoulder blades, and then, like a slow, familiar stream, firmly pushes through your muscle fibers at a mellow pace into the underside of your upper arm. Sinking downwards, loosening all the tension within, once again spiraling alongside the heavy joint and bone to soften up all the surrounding tissue cushioning around it. No bit of tightness remains under the gentle caress of my tender voice. Not even the mattress underneath seems to press against your arm now, almost as if you were floating in weightless bliss. The firm light is now passing the elbow at sluggish speed, like the memory of a warm bath after a long day's work. No memory of strain remaining with the bones meet, before that feeling wanders down, down, almost dancing on the skin covering your ulna and your radius, for the lower arm stops responding to the brain, simply relaxing, releasing whatever coiling tension might remain inside. After its torpid journey to the arm, the warmth of my voice stops its gentle movement, nesting in the wrist, that interplay of many different tiny bones, dexterous muscles and sinews, softening the grip, branching along those bones, to every segment of your finger towards the very tips, coagulation underneath the nails, before returning its tenderizing heat again, palm to back, your entire hand that has toiled so hard throughout the day. Hmm, good, good. Having done its work, the warmth wanders back up the arm again, this time on the upper side along the relaxed fibers holding your bones, past the elbow where the veins oh so gently throb, very, very tenderly, rising to the bicep, working the heat throughout as it feels that wonderful muscle. Not just at center, but where it attaches to the skeleton as well, making the tension within a feeling of the past, before it wanders on into those poor worked shoulders once again. Then, along the collarbone, softly whispering sweet release to them as the massaging warm sensation 
caringly pulses across the bone, only stopping briefly at the vertebrae that form your central axis, moving on to the awaiting collarbone on the opposite side of your body, where it finds purchase in the shoulder joint of your other arm, my voice working its comforting magic once again as it sinks into the bone. Slowly wandering down the other arm, where any pressure still remaining evaporates under the pulsing light of my compulsive words. Very good. No worries. You'll feel as if you're in heaven once I'm done softening your flesh. <laughs> Just keep those eyes on me. The strangely calming words are starting to pass the elbow akin to warm, warm water flowing through that gap left between the bones, going further down the low arm, the very source of your now sleepy grip. Not just sleepy though, no, utterly numb, relaxing the hand under those cozy sheets, making the fingers loosely curl up as tension wanes, the lack of any pull being welcomed by the sinews. And then it wanders back up again, to the nerves and muscles, pulsing warmly up the entire arm once more at no real speed at all, clearly floating through the armpit, through the chest muscle, before lazily ascending into the neck. The very sustenance that I'm craving, pulsing on the arteries lying just beneath the skin. But not yet. I'm not done tenderizing my meal, especially if it is so receptive. Hmm. Let my voice work its magic on your neck as well, then give in to the relaxing tone of it. Taking off the weight your head imposes on the tendons connecting it to all the pretty rest of you. Pulsing into your lovely face the warmth having gone through the tired base of your very skull into it, just above the spine, numbing the entire jaw. Did you know that the human's strongest muscle connects it to your skull? It's called the masseter, and it works really, really hard to chop up all your food and grind it into a pulp. Let's give this diligent worker a bit of well-deserved relief, now shall we? Or did my jaw-dropping appearance do that already? <laughs> you might not be able to speak. Your muscles are all hanging loose right now. But still, you know how to extend a compliment. Even drew my grip on you. What a charmer. I would blush were I not a creature of the night. But let's continue talking about you and those wonderful muscles that work your smile around your soft lips. Your sleepy eyes, all that fatiguing interplay is gone, all relaxed, a thing of the past, no worrying frown to be found amidst the torpid fibers anymore. Good. My voice's warmth stays there, just for a comfortable while to find every last remaining bit of pressure trying to escape from it. Smoothing out the nose, the brows, the forehead, radiating all that calm from ear to ear as it wanders along the ridge of your brain like gentle liquid, before it wanders back down again, passing by the mouth and flaccid tongue into your soft throat. Hmm, working its magic in that strained place, producing your own speech now bereft of it, descending further down into your chest. Almost like a dark, comfortable sun, loosening it from the inside, shining infernal light onto the insides of your arcing ribs, relaxing your heart, relaxing your lungs, the warmth in your diaphragm still remaining from before. Not only does the blood start to get thicker, pulsing oh so slowly through your veins, but it starts to feel your entired, uncoiled weightlessness as well. Gravity seems to have no say right now. 
it sinks deeper, the gentle tone of my voice into your abs, unwinding the stomach, the entrails, creeping through those stubborn muscles as they still try to break up all your food. That compelling voice tells them to slow down, lie down, rest, for they are tireless and may have earned much needed respite now. Deeper, ever deeper flows the warmth, grips those beautiful sinews, those tendons aligning the hips at either side, connecting feet and torso, loosening those too. Underappreciated is what they are, they deserve some rest as well. Then that warmth wanders deeper yet again into the other leg. Don't think I've forgotten about it. That would be oh so very cruel of me. <laughs> the thigh is now pulsing with that wonderful warmth as you surrender what illusion of control you have over that strong muscle. Now engulfed by my compulsion, you surrender the tension in your knee to the calm as well. The warmth still sinking. It reaches the ankle to your lower leg, reaching the tips of your toes. All those little bones within now resting, surrounded by sleepy tissue. Even the nails feel floaty now. We are getting to the main course now, and you have been oh so very attentive. Torpid does the warmth rise again, pulsing with the rhythm of your heart, your entire body numb throughout, completely under my control. The heat now pulses up the loosened muscles in your thigh, through the groin, along all the vessels of the blood. The dull flank, the content and tender chest, pulsing further upwards into your oh-so-delicious neck. What a wonderful sensation feeling my cold undead bones. The warmth of your blood pouring into me. Ah, I can feel the strength of your life invigorating me. How delectable. I could drink you right dry. Ah, that should be enough then. I can't drain you entirely of what gives you life now, can I? Hmm, the terror within your eyes has subsided. Did you enjoy the numbing workings of my voice? How one look into the devilish void in my eyes made you relinquish all control, all tension in your body? <laughs> my, you really did get lost in it, didn't you? Well, I planned on sucking you dry come dawn before I scurry off into my lair, staying here until this horrid rain subsided. Hmm. Actually, let me join you under that thick blanket. Oh, the warmth of the living. A wonderful gift, oft undervalued. Why are you looking so surprised? Did you expect me to be cold to the touch? <laughs> You felt the warmth of my voice, didn't you? That certainly extends to the rest of me. Or do your senses lie to you just now? <laughs> or perhaps did you expect the rain to cling to me? <laughs> As if I permit that. Here, let me embrace you more tightly. Feed off your body heat. Don't you feel it? Soft skin bereft of the heaven's tears falling outside, in the illusory heat as I lay next to you, your helpless body pressed against mine. How its alleged warmth spreads under our blanket, softens the muscles even further, shines upon the skin. Oh, you are such a precious one. Maybe I'll keep you after all. Hmm. But for that, you'll have to fall asleep again, to stay healthy for my feedings. 
Here, let me get on top of you. Rock that tired brain to sleep. Let me work your ears, your mind. Stare deep, deep, deep into my eyes. Release all your tension, your worries, your stresses. Not one thought or memory remains. Give in to the release of hypnos. Relinquish all action, all control, and softly drift over. Rest. Sleep.